Today, I'm back at Max Motive, located in Cheswick, Pennsylvania, to look at this stunning 1960 Buick Electra 225 convertible. But before we take the tour, some background information on the 1960 Electra. The Electra name started in 1959, and the body style was essentially a carryover design with changes. Sources said minor changes, but looking at both cars, that's not entirely true. The grille, headlights, front bumper, delta fins in the back are different, as well as on the side of the car on the 60 model, it's more sculpted out. 1960 Buick changed their logo design to the design that they still use today. Buick in 1960 offered 19 models in three series, well, technically four series. LeSabre was at the bottom. It replaced the Buick Special. Then next was the Invicta, it replaced the Buick Century. Moving up the ladder, Electra. Now, not to get confused, there are two Electra offerings. And this was the last year for that. They ended up ditching the Electra nameplate and they just stuck with Electra 225 moving forward. But the regular Electra replaced the Super Trim. At the top of the heap was the Electra 225. And the 225 Essentially, it stood for 225 inches long. It rode a longer wheelbase as well as was longer overall dimensions than the regular Electra. While we're on the topic of specs, let's just go through them. So the wheelbase of this car is 126.3 inches long. It's 80.7 inches wide, 55.9 inches tall. It weighs anywhere between 4,700 pounds to 4,900 pounds. So that's essentially that's two and a half tons. Starting price for the 1960 Buick Electra 225 convertible was $4,192, which adjusted for inflation is $40,180.32. The 1960 Buick Electra was designed by none other than Bill Mitchell. When we walk around this car, there's various different design cues that remind me of different animals. Like the front end, to me, looks like a Texas Longhorn cattle. There's also design influences of like a, a like a blue whale on the sides. It's very textured on the sides, as you can see. Okay, we're back up front here on the Buick Electra. I just want to show you this emblem. Look at how you can stick your hand behind it. It's, it's kind of like, look at this grill. It's like a wave, I use that term a lot, but this one actually legitly looks like it. Check out this headlight situation. It's a very stunning car. This car is totally unrestored. It's an original survivor car. Turn signal indicators are down here. A nice space in between the grill. So this one's pretty straightforward to get underneath the hood. Just pop it open, just push up. All right, let's talk about this Buick engine. This is a 401 cubic inch displacement nailhead V8. It's essentially a 364, just enlarged. This engine was introduced in 1959 as a 10.5 compression ratio, 16 valves, two valves per cylinder. It makes 326 horsepower, 445 foot-pounds of torque. This engine also goes by the name Wildcat 445. They took a page out of Edsel's book and they highlighted the torque figure as their engine name, just like they did in 1958 with the Edsel 475. Top speed of the Buick Electra 225 was 118 miles per hour. It got between 9 and 13 miles to the gallon. It could go 0 to 60 in 10.7 seconds. The transmission that was coupled to this beast of an engine was a two-speed automatic turbine drive, also went by the name of Dynaflow. That name was dropped in 1958. Still the same transmission, different name. All right, getting inside. I don't know if there's a better color combination than a black car with a red interior. Just look at how these colors complement one another. Just check out this interior. Look at how nice the seats are. Like I said, this is an original car. It's never been restored. This car is currently for sale at maxmotive.com. I will put the link in the description. Okay, let's walk through this door panel design. Just check this out. So you got carpet down here and like a leather material up here. Really nice door armrest. This is the same type of door handle that you find in like an Impala. Super cool, you pull up on it to get out. This is for the vent window. All the other windows are electric. Oh. 
I just love crank out vent windows. There's just something really classy about that. Just check out where they decided to put the electric switches for the electric windows. It's in a really weird spot. It's not on the door panel. It's actually on the base of the wraparound windshield. All right, let's go through this dashboard, control center layout. Just check out all these buttons. It's really cool how this is all laid out. I've never seen a dashboard quite like this. Okay, moving from left to right, this is on the bottom half. There's a topper, there's an upper half. We're gonna start with the bottom half. This first control controls the lights, bright, dome and dim right next to it is the accessories right next to that is the windshield wipers and push it to activate the wash moving just above those switches you have two very unique switches for the left and the right vents okay moving to the right side of the steering wheel four more switches airflow heat defrost rear heat just check out these switches look at how unique they look all right, still on the right side of the steering wheel, but right below those switches, the ignition switch, right next to that, the volume control, as well as bass and tremble. Right next to the volume control on the right-hand side is the radio. Notice the pre-selection buttons. It just says Buick. That's pretty cool. Just to the right of the radio, that's the radio tuner. There is a light right above the tuner, which is really cool to see that there. This almost looks like a gun sight. And then when you put the gear selector in gear, it has a circle around it. So park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Also something else I wanted to show you is you can adjust this. So if there's a glare or something, you can make it so that there isn't one. That's a super cool, unique feature. I've never seen that before. There's a knob on this side over here and it adjusts there's another set of numbers up there in the corner what are those numbers for okay just off to the right of the speedometer still underneath this like hood type thing is the clock just to the right of that in the center is the ashtray as well as cigarette lighter for the front occupants moving all the way to the right just right in front of the passenger side seat this is where the glove box is located it is very cool how this glove box operates it pulls out it doesn't open up very much, but the design is really cool. Different, I should say. It's different than you normally would see. Slides out like a drawer. Moving on to the pedal box, just notice how everything is placed here. Look at that gas pedal, the accelerator pedal. That is huge. The high beam switch is on the floor over there to the left. They like to advertise power brakes as well as power steering. Power brakes on the brake pedal, power steering on the steering wheel. The very comfortable driving position in this car. It's a very big car, but there's lots of room. And just looking over that hood, the hood looks amazing. But just check, the um, steering wheel isn't in my lap. Fingers fit underneath the steering wheel pretty nicely. Just check out what you're looking at when you look over the hood. It's very cool. Here's the power seat control. notice how you have to step over the frame to get inside here and it dips down inside that's a very unique feature that you don't usually see nowadays and getting in the back is really easy you just push the seat forward and it pivots out of the way notice all the courtesy lights that are in this car got two in the rear this is what it looks like on that side okay, I'm sitting in the back seat now there's plenty of leg room in the back seat here which I'll show you so just check that out very wide armrest ashtray this has electric windows there's also another ashtray over here same thing electric windows and the top of course because it's a convertible It's hard to convey on screen how big these doors are, but they're pretty, they're pretty thick. And notice, starting from about, actually starting from here, where the vent window starts, it starts protruding all the way out. Somebody asked me what my favorite fins on a car is. 
I can't really give you an answer because it always changes. I really like the fins on a 57 Studebaker Golden Hawk, but I like the fins on a 59 Rambo Ambassador Wagon as well. These fins look great too. Just see how that angles up the whole way. I unlocked the trunk so we can open it and see what's what this is like. This is a massive trunk. This is a full size spare and you still have plenty of room. You have all the space underneath. So just check that out. Lots of space back here, even a little shelf there. This is the convertible cover or convertible top cover. Bumper jack. Just want to bring you in here and show you how this is all textured. It almost looks like gills on a fish. But it's like that the whole way down. The attention to detail is just incredible on this car. And it's hard to convey how much how it's sculpted. This whole car has it's sculpted the whole way down. Like you have the fin coming back here, but it also has a sculpting line going towards the front of the car as well. That starts back here. Okay, moving up to the front just to show you that it's sculpted up here too. You notice how the lights protrude outwards. The finning actually starts from this wheel and it goes the whole way back. Also, while we're up here, look at this wheel design. It's slotted. It's just a really cool design. All right, one last thing before we get to the pros and cons, the options and accessories and standard equipment. With the Buick Electra 225, you got power steering as well as power brakes as standard. You also got 12 inch finned aluminum drums to help stop it because it weighed almost two and a half tons. Also, I forgot to mention the 225 Electra replaced the Buick Roadmaster series. Feel free to pause this video and look at each individual one, but I'm only going to highlight a few. The Twilight Sentinel was a Buick exclusive. It was their automatic headlight system. This is 1960. That's crazy. And it had an automatic dimming feature as well, which was optional. Buick offered a positive traction differential. Okay, on to the pros and cons. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time stumbling upon this channel and you like the content, hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, might as well turn on all notifications as well. Like and share and write me a comment. If it brought up memories of the past, tell those stories in the comment section. I love reading all the stories. I read and answer and respond to most comments of substance. Anyway, on to the pros and cons. The, con the pros and cons are coming out of a book that I got when I was a kid. It's called The Complete Book of Collectible Cars. It's from 1930 to 2000. I need an updated version, but this one still works for the most part. For the pros, Smooth, no sweat performance, comfy, still affordable, low original production of some models. Now against the cons, big, clumsy, thirsty, workmanship way down from mid-50s Buicks, hammered up, 60s styling, not considered one of the great Buicks. And that's where I kind of draw the line. Like, to me, the Electra was a great Buick. That's why I said, like, this, I need an updated version. This one was 20 years ago. Maybe it wasn't a good Buick then, but to me, the Electra stands out as one of the best. All right, well, till next time, toodles!